one of the central it's me rebecca and because so many people have actually requested it today i'm going to give you a quick run through on how i made my hermione yule ball dress now two things before we get started one i am not a seamstress this is not my career i made hundreds of mistakes whilst making this costume so please don't take my word as gospel and if you have better techniques on how to do any of this one let me know and two feel free to do it and the second thing is i made this dress over i think it was about three years ago now so um yeah i don't remember every single detail on how i made this dress so that's why it's a run through rather than a step-by-step -step tutorial if at any point you want a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make any part of this dress I will scour the internet and find any tutorials that use the same techniques that I did so feel free to go down into the description and check them out. So the first thing I did when deciding to make this dress was I grabbed my mama and roped her into helping me. She wanted to kill me whilst making the dress, she wanted to kill me after finishing the dress, and I'm sure she still wants to kill me now, but somehow I've survived. The second thing I did was get reference pictures. Now, I would really recommend getting reference pictures through watching the scene in the Goblet of Fire rather than just looking at pictures that are the character or in this case Hermione posing in the costume because you get these um, sort of character profiles of them in their certain costumes and it doesn't really show what the what the dress was made of so instead of them just sort of standing you know like this in the dress it doesn't really show how it moves and if you really want the costume to be that accurate I would really recommend looking at how the costume moves, um, how it catches the light, how the character is able to move in it because some costumes can be very restrictive. Um, so yeah, just get as much research as possible. Watch the scene of the Goblet of Fire a hundred times. Um, watch it in slow-mo. Really, slow-mo is like the best thing when researching and just take loads and loads of, of screenshots and pictures and just anything you can. Now at the time of me wanting to make this dress there were no patterns because of course this was a copyrighted design, no one could really make it without permission and it was just so secretive on how this was made that I literally had nothing to go on. I know that nowadays in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in Florida, they sell versions of this dress for little kids. So if you are in Florida and are able to go to Madame Malkin's in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in Diagon Alley, go there, it's a really good reference. But at the time of me wanting to make this dress, I had nothing. So after, again, loads more research, I decided to set on a A-line dress pattern and the reason I did this was because again watching the scene of the Goblet of Fire with Hermione and, and Victor at the Yule Ball when um, he's spinning her around and, and you see the fabric move it's not a circle skirt dress um, the the fabric is very sort of, of pencil like almost so I knew it, the fabric wouldn't flare out, so I wasn't looking for a ball gown, like, bell dress. I was looking for something that was a bit more, not body type, but a bit more straight. So I decided to go for a, I think it was a simplicity A-line dress pattern. So once I got the pattern to make this dress, me and my mum had to alter it. The original pattern was very box-like. And because of my body shape, that was just completely not flattering at all. Um, I kind of looked like a transformer rather than a beautiful witch in a ball. Um, so <laughs> we decided to change the neckline of the bodice from a straight line to a sweetheart neckline. Again, tutorials in the description. And we did that because um, with the neckline being like this, I kind of looked like a boy and it didn't really work. We wanted to actually show off that I was a young woman and that I did actually have boobs. So that's why we changed that. Um, but I think with 
a lot of it, it was all the same. I think it was just the bodice that we had trouble changing. So once the pattern was all sort of set up and ready for fabric, I went to eBay. Ah, love eBay, it is the best. And I went and I bought um, my fabrics. Now, through my research, I discovered that the main body of the dress, so everything here, all under the petals here, um, this was best served as a pink satin because I wanted this to be as durable as possible and it was the closest fabric I could find to match, again, Hermione's ball gown from the film. And so I bought, I believe it was like three or four meters of fabric for the main body of the dress. I think I ended up buying four and a half meters to be safe because I knew I'd be making mistakes because again, beginner sewer. And with the rest of the dress, so with all these, what I'm gonna dub petals, um, I got chiffon and chiffon is quite a difficult fabric in that it has different weights and I knew that again wanting for the dress to be durable I think I got a medium weight if that means anything to anyone um, for the chiffon but I really would stay away from heavy fabrics for the flowy parts of the dress because again if it's heavy it won't be flowy when you move. With each colour of the different chiffons I got, I believe it was three meters of fabric, three yards, sorry. I keep getting mixed up on my measurements. Um, with each color, I got lightest to darkest, I got this very nice sort of rosy pink that kind of shimmers. Um, I believe this was called Rose um, when I bought it. And just the fact that in the description it said it kind of shifts and it's kind of iridescent. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it, it does actually shimmer which is what I wanted. And then I bought kind of this wine brown purpley colour. Now the reason I did that is because if you look at the original dress, you'll see that her whole kind of costume, with accessories included, is kind of flower themed. So I kind of thought of this as a kind of upside down rose. And the whole point of the colour shift, I think, was to make Emma Watson look taller, um, because it, it it draws the eye in and kind of slims her down. Not that she needs slimming. I mean, good God, she is the slimmest actress I've ever seen. Um, so with that all in mind, I knew that I wanted a kind of gradient going down the dress and I couldn't find a mid-tone between the pink and the very, very dark purple down here. Um, so I kind of just had to go through eBay and I, and I actually went to fabric shops as well just in case because I know that sometimes a fabric will look different in a picture than it does in real life and that actually happened with this. Um, and I went to different shops and I couldn't find anything so again I went to eBay and sort of landed with this de decision of this kind of purpley uh, wine colour. I, I do think it was, a, it was like titled a wine shade. Um, but this actually worked out rather well because um, chiffon is such a thin fabric that, I mean, I don't know if you can see it, but I can see my hand through this fabric. And with it having kind of purpley undertone, it would match the purple down here when it overlaps. And also the pink satin of the main body of the dress comes through under here and it actually does give this purpley pink iridescent kind of colour happening underneath so it does in in whole it does actually work but if you can try and get a mid-tone between the darkest and the lightest shade you can find that gives it a better gradient in my opinion but for me that worked so again just as a reminder four and a half uh, yards of fabric for the dress um three or four yards of fabric for each colour of chiffon and for the lining I used a old curtain, actually an old pair of curtains, I used the lining from it and I just happened to have enough fabric, it was just pure luck, I didn't even have to measure it, I don't know why, just the sewing gods, the fabric gods, whatever type of gods seem to have aligned the stars in that situation so I had my white lining fabric, I had my pink satin fabric, and I had my three different colours of chiffon. So quick recap. I have done my research, I've got my reference pictures. I've altered a pattern ready for this dress. I have bought fabric 
for this dress in the quantities I believe I needed and for a tip for that go with more fabric than you need and I have also washed and ironed the fabric if needed. Do not iron chiffon. It is such a delicate fabric, you risk damaging it. But with satin, go very carefully on a low heat. Now I cut out pieces and started sewing them together. Me and my mum agreed that we'd actually start with the lining pieces, so the inside of the dress, because if we made any major mistakes, we could hide it better because again, it's on the inside of the dress no one's gonna see it. Once all that was out of the way, I could start cutting out and sewing bits and pieces together. And what we did is we started with the top of the dress, so we started with the bodice, so we got the lining of the bodice and the outer pink layer of the bodice, and then we sewed them together and inserted plastic boning, because we didn't know how to do steel boning. Again, tutorials in the description. And then we did the lining of the skirt and the outer layer of the skirt, so the pink, uh, pink uh, satin of the skirt, and we didn't sew them together into one dress. Do not do that yet. Uh, we kept them separate. So once everything was all sorted, we sewed the lining, top and bottom, together, and we sewed the dress, the pink satin, the top and bottom, together, and then we sewed the lining and the dress together again with boning on the inside of the bodice. With the skirt, what we did before adding all of the petals of chiffon here is that it's made up of three panels and with the front panel, because if, if you look at the pictures of the original dress, they have like these arrow darts happening of like texture and what I think they did with the original dress is that they were actual separate panels that were all sort of sewn together. Me and my mum didn't know how to do that, so we faked it. We added like two or three inches um, on the front panel so it would be longer than the rest of, of the dress. And by the time we did all of these darts and this kind of, um, again, sort of like texture, I don't really know the word for it, it actually shortened it to line up with the rest of, of the dress. And the reason we didn't just skip out on it altogether was because it actually has a use for lining up all of the petals in a certain way. So don't skip that step. And then we ended up just sewing the, the top and the bottom together. With the shoulders of the dress, the actual original dress ha has like these tiny spaghetti straps. Um, I knew that because this dress was so heavy, if I used spaghetti straps, it wouldn't hold. So we ended up just using almost like, um, I think it was like an inch of fabric and used them for the straps, kind of making it in the same way that we've done. So we did lining and the outer fabric and we used that and we did it in such a way that the, the sort of sleeves would fold over. So we sewed them on, um, sort of like, so they would lay facing my my uh, my face and then we would fold them back over like this. So they would lay facing that way and then we folded them back over like this and uh, roll hem them to the, to the straps so it would hide itself. And then with the actual petals, we had to do this with a bit of, of um, sneakiness because if I just turn the dress around here, um, so we had, the the dress all sorted the the entire shape all sorted and then we had to keep in mind that we were going to put an invisible zip in the back that actually ends all the way down here so although it looks like it ends here it actually ends all the way down here and we knew that we couldn't just have strips of fabric gathered and have it coming over because i wouldn't have been able to actually get in or out of the dress so what we had to do with the uh, first couple of petal layers here, so the first two of the pink, is that we had to do them in two bits of each row. So we had the top layer here and the uh, second layer chopped in half and roll hemmed and then we had it on this side but after that we could actually just have it in one continuous piece of fabric layer by layer. And the shape of these are like they're like uh, smiley faces, so they are like this, and they're slightly, slightly gathered. Not, it, it's hardly noticeable, but it is slightly gathered, and each edge is roll hemmed. So get yourself a roll hem foot, 
and the best way I found I found to roll hem something was fold over the fabric, fold in the in the raw edge so it's hidden already from the needle and then feed it through the foot otherwise you are just going to get this kind of fraying kind of almost mustache kind of situation happening with the fabric. So we positioned every single one and again if I just turn this back around um, that's why we didn't skip the arrow darts here because we lined up each piece of fabric and we did it in such a way that um, the fabric wouldn't just go parallel down the dress it would come in like an arrow so we had arrows going pointing up that way with the darts here and we had the fabric coming down in an arrow like this so we made them slightly longer with each layer until finally you couldn't see the dress down here and I believe the last two purple layers here was just one continuous band of fabric down here not even gathered so it starts off a tiny bit gathered a little less gathered a little less gathered and not gathered at all down the bottom with the actual sleeves the chiffon sleeves not the straps keeping up the dress but the chiffon sleeves is that we attached it just on top and we roll hemmed it that way and we did it in such a way that it's the same shape as this but we did it on a slightly off center kind of thing so instead of the sleeves being even both sides of the shoulder it would be slightly longer at the back so if I just do that hopefully you can see it so you have a shorter sleeve at the front than down here at the back so it kind of cascades down almost like a mini cape kind of situation but again it's the same shape same sort of half moon shape here than it is all the way down the dress here everything about this dress is soft there are no harsh lines that will grab your attention the only harsh lines and i say that very loosely on this dress are the darts here and they are covered by the layers of chiffon so again it softens it so think soft when making this dress and my mum said to me for the belt why don't you just buy a purple ribbon and I wanted to keep in the family of fabric I already had and I think if I bought a, a purple ribbon it would just stick out too much and be too bold so what I did is I got the dark purple chiffon that I used at the bottom of the dress folded it over and roll hemmed both sides making a ribbon and then with the rest of the fabric um, of, the sh of the dark purple chiffon is I made again another ribbon tied it and sewed it into a bow and put poppers on the back here so it would go around the waist like this and come round the waist like this and it would bring in my waist and then just pop in place here and then I could just have that bow there without it actually being needed to tie and then you have this lovely kind of silhouette of pink dark purple soft 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 layers and so it's still being bold it's still soft that's why I did it did it out of chiffon but if you don't want to do that that's fine the only thing Thing I would change about this dress would be the waistline because me and my mum again beginner sewers we didn't really know how to do a dropped waist and on the original dress it's a drop it's not here on the body it's here on the body it's almost hip level um, so when actually making the bodice make sure you measure it to about here so excuse me you're gonna see skin so my hips are here, my waist is here, just a little bit below the waist, that's where you need the bodice to end and the skirt to begin. So that's the only thing I would change because when I'm wearing this dress, because the, the, the sort of waistline is, is wrong, um, it does make me look a little bit overweight. But um, that would be literally the only thing I would change about this dress. I love it to pieces. I am so proud of making this dress. Um, again, there are hundreds of mistakes and if I could go back with the expertise I know now, I would make it better, but really I don't want to. I am so proud of making this dress. Um, and again, like I said before, invisible zip down here and that's all hidden by the fabric as well. 
So final pointers on making this dress. I would suggest get an A-line dress pattern, doesn't matter which one, just find one that you like. Then alter it if needs be. Get a satin pink fabric, preferably one that shimmers. Everything about this I try to get in a way that it would shimmer in the light. So just keep that in mind. And then with the front panel of the dress with the arrow darts, um, just make it a couple of inches longer than the rest of, of the dress. So when you gather and dart all of these markings, it will shorten the fabric and you won't have one short panel at the front of the dress. It will hopefully all be lined up. And that's it. That's all I can tell you on how I made my Hermione Yule Ball dress. Again, tutorials are in the description and if you have any questions for me, leave them in the comments below. If I don't know, I will find out for you and I wish you the best of luck with making this costume. You will probably do a better job than I have. Thank you ever so much for watching. Please like, comment, hit that subscribe button, become one of our fun animals and remember, always be a fan of your animals. I'll see you next time. Bye guys!